arms of one in the desert crying out. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. The voice of one in the desert crying out. The voice. Good morning, friends. Uh, this is your host, Stephen Black, bringing to you again, Freedom Realized Live, coming from the First Stone Ministry offices in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and where we are going to, for 2020, bring you again some bold truth and some bold courage and bold compassion. The bold compassion today, I'm excited to have uh, our guest, uh, Robert Goldwitzer from Munich, Germany, will be joining us. And uh, as you may, if you watched last week's episode, uh, seg uh, the segment on bold truth that talked a lot about uh, the scriptures and laying out again, this idea for us as a a ministry, a ministry staff, when we were processing in the beginning of this year, is we want a clarity of vision in protecting and the promotion of our faith for 2020, right? You could play on the words 2020, hindsight is 2020, but clarity, clarity of vision. And, and that's what we all need. We need some real, clear, mandating truth that is going to help uh, the church and uh, help those who are wanting to find real freedom, freedom realized, to actually realize a new life of uh, freedom. And so be praying with me and the First Stone Ministry staff as we are going into uh, 2020 this year. Uh, I do wanna announce, um, and Jared, if you could bring up the, um, the picture of my book now, uh, actually uh, headed to the printers. They may be even printing it today. I haven't heard, but um, it is being printed in Spanish. And so now we have the Spanish version of Freedom Realize Live. And you can go to firststone.org or freedomrealized.org. Uh, either one of those websites uh, will take you uh, to the um, the book where you can order the book in Spanish. Uh, the eBooks uh, should be online at Amazon uh, and uh, the Spanish version here actually in the next week. Uh, so you can actually order it directly off of Amazon. And then in the European uh, part of the, the world, uh, it's uh, some of the same book distributors that uh, people use uh, in, in uh, getting any, uh, any books like Amazon uh, most of the people in the United States uh, get uh, the, uh, any book that way. So I am excited about that because uh, I'll go ahead and mention now the staff of uh, First Stone, myself, um, our office administrator, Joseph Thiessen, uh, our director of women's ministries, Laura Lee Stanley, uh, Jim Farrington, our men's minister intern, and our newest addition, uh, to our staff is Laura Beth Perry. And some of you may know Laura Perry's uh, testimony uh, was uh, from uh, transgender to transformation in Christ. And uh, she's got her own book and, uh, and I will be having uh, Laura back on the program 
as well. So a lot going on. Our whole staff is going to Mexico City. And uh, so it's really timely that we bring uh, Freedom Realized in Spanish. We are doing a conference in Mexico City. Uh, Jared, let's go ahead and just look at those graphics now. Uh, there's a Spanish version uh, that introduces, uh, uh, it's uh, Ornado de Rest, uh, Restoration uh, uh, Entrego Sexual which is uh, the idea of uh, sexual freedom, integrity in our sexuality, and verdaderamente libres, which is truly to be set free. The English version is, uh, it's the Restoration Conference of Sexual in Integrity, and that we would truly be set free. The tagline verse, for this conference is John chapter 8, verse 36 says, So if the Son will set you free, you will be free indeed, which again ties into the idea of freedom realized. And uh, so be praying for us as a ministry as we go to Mexico City week after next. Um, I'm, a, I'm actually very excited about it. Uh, got some uh, friends uh, from around the world, some friends from Barcelona, Spain, that will be joining us, and actually um, uh, leadership in the church there in Mexico. Uh, you can see all the information uh, at the Exodus website, which is uh, congresoexodus.org, uh, C-O-N-G-R-E-S-O, and then E-X-O-D-U-S dot org, and you can register there for the conference. Um, all right, so Jared, let's go to Bold Truth and our Bold Truth passage of scripture uh, today. Um, I'm actually really excited about this passage of scripture in that um, I felt like the Lord spoke to our staff this week during our prayer and meditation. Um, it starts off here, and let's start off in verse three. It said, "Bless uh, be God, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ." Verse four, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. And verse five. He, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, by which he made us acceptable in the beloved. And we see in verse 7 how, how that is accomplished. Verse 7 says, In him... In true believers, in you, church at Ephesus, he's speaking to, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made abound towards us. He certainly made it abound towards me, abound towards uh, the people that we have on this program, our guests, uh, in coming out of homosexuality, sexual sin, sexual bizarreness. I call it LGBTQ plus sign chaos uh, in what's going on in our world. It's, it's, it's pretty chaotic. But he made his, his grace to abound. And he did this uh, towards us in all wisdom, in all prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, that is God's will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather to one, to gather in one all things in Christ. Now, this is amazing, folks, because uh, both which are in heaven and which are on earth that are in him, God wants to bring redemption uh, to souls. He wants to bring an inheritance, uh, verse 11, in him we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ 
should be to the praise and the glory of Christ. Now, again, as I have, have talked about in other Freedom Realized uh, programs, folks, this is really important uh, for us to be able to obtain a real godly life, uh, one really operating in grace, where we're able to rise above sin's control over us is that we have this kind of mentality. And this is the mentality of the first century church and that they believe that Jesus Christ was getting ready to arrive on the scene at any moment. They had no idea. I think they probably would have lost heart if they would have known that the Lord wasn't coming for another 2,000 two, two plus years, which I believe we are at the end. But here's the interesting thing about eternity and walking with God and God's truth. Every decade of mankind that is following the Lord should have this within their soul, within their heart, that Jesus is coming. Uh, in Jesus's words, we're not going to go there, but I'll, I'll remind you in one of the parables, uh, in the, the parables of the talent, but also the parable of uh uh, yeah, the parable of the talent where they where the wicked slave buried uh, his talents because he thought his uh, ta his master was was too harsh. But it it talks about you should have been ready, and in many places it said it you should have been ready. And in another parable, Jesus uh, he communicates about the servant having not been ready or a a readiness of soul. And he calls that servant a wicked servant. And uh, that's that's pretty bold. That's bold truth for you there. Uh, so they had this mentality. And so this is Paul writing to the Ephesians uh, in Ephesus, the, the, the church in Ephesus, about how they had first trusted. In verse 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, right? So... In him, this salvation in whom you have, you've believed and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. What that means is the Holy Spirit comes and he comes upon a believer to bring them into righteousness and truth that is like a betrothal. Kind of like uh, when you get engaged, you usually put a ring on that says I'm engaged. And then when you get married, you get the final ring and you wear wedding garments and then you go to the wedding feast and then there's a consummation of the marriage and so the holy spirit is a guarantee verse 14 of our inheritance until the redemption of the pur purchased possession to the praise of the glory of god so the holy spirit if he's not working and operating in your life if you're not sensing the spirit of truth giving you truth you might want to check in to see if you're really even saved um, and that's what Paul told the, the Corinthians. I uh, always like to mention 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, where it says, examine yourself to see if, in fact, Jesus Christ is in you unless you fail the test. And over in Galatians 5, we see what the test is if you're bearing forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit isn't just merely having the manifestation of some kind of gift like speaking in tongues, even though that can be a, an amazing gift. Really, I, I liked what uh, the old prophet Leonard Ravenhill used to say, Holy Spirit life is holy life. In other words, if you really have the Holy Spirit in you, he is going to be leading you in a consecration and a continued development of being a disciple of Jesus. Otherwise, you're probably not saved uh, and you need to get saved. Verse 15, therefore also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and for your love for all the saints, verse 16, I do not cease to give thanks but I'm making mention of you in my, in my prayers. And this is what he's going to pray now, verse 17. And this gets to the whole thing about clarity of vision and being in 2020, right? Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may give to us something. We're, we're praying for this at First Stone. We should be praying for this in the church. We should be praying for this that are in bondage to sin, 
a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. You know, knowing God, like Jesus talked about, uh, about those people who don't know him in Matthew 7 in the Sermon on the Mount, which we, we talked about uh, last week. Knowing the Lord is to have intimacy with him. If you have intimacy with somebody, you really know them well. If you have intimacy with God, you're you're or growing in intimacy, I should say. So, so many of us are are just starting to grow. <coughs> Excuse me. But in um, in thirty seven years now of ardently following the Lord, it's like I remember Leonard Ravenhill as a young man saying, "It takes at least twenty years for the making of a man of God." And I, you know, as a pretty uh, bold man of God, even in my early days, it was like, I'm a man of God. And then I got to the 20 year mark, then I got to the 30 year mark, and now I'm headed towards the 40 year mark. And I'm going, wow, I am just scratching the surface on knowing God. And we need to operate in a spirit of humility and mercy and grace extending to people that are in bondage to sin. That's why we are a ministry uh, and we call ourselves a ministry of sexual redemption a ministry of help to the sexually and relationally broken so that God would give us a revelation of his knowledge. And then verse 18, <coughs> and I apologize, folks, we are dealing with the croupy crud here in our office and it hit me just last night. And so I'm dealing with some congestion. Uh, but verse 18, it says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. There's that 2020 vision, right? So that you come into a place of clarity of understanding and that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of his glory of, of the inheritance that is in the saints. Folks, this salvation, I mean, think about it. Eternity, living forever and ever and ever. What an amazing gift, especially for those of us getting ready to, you know, uh, next week's my birthday. I'm going to be 59. So my last year in my 50s and head towards that 60 mark. And it's like, wow, OK, I'm entering into a new decade. And uh, again, it's it's drawing closer to the time when I'm closer to eternity than I am living in uh, the, the temporal realm of this world. And, uh, and we need to have our eyes enlightened that we may know what the hope of this calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance are. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us that believe this working of his mighty power, which he does this in Jesus Christ. When he raised Jesus from the dead, he demonstrated his power. He seated Jesus at the right hand of God in the heavenly places in which we are also seated. He, he began this chapter that says, blessed are us, we are, because we are seated in Christ in the heavenly places. And far above all principality and power, ab above all demonic powers, that every name that is named, that is above all names, Jesus Christ, his name, is the one that is above all names, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Now, I wanted to mention this as our bold truth today, because without Christ, without the power of God, without grace, which only the humble, James 4, right, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Only the humble, only those who are agreeing with, constantly agreeing with Jesus Christ, his word and his way are those that will found, be found being able to have empowerment. And then verse 22, which is a great hope and in, in the crescendo of the age in which he, God, put all things under Jesus's feet and gave Jesus to be the head of all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So for our Bold Truth segment today, I wanted to reiterate uh, in that we are in a fight of faith. Paul told Timothy that this is a fight for our faith. And never have I ever seen in, our, in, in my, uh, you know, going on 30, 30 plus years of full-time ministry, 
uh, you know, 28 years here with First Stone Ministries now full time. And um, the reality of the attack on people's faith and people falling away, it's, it's never been this bad. And uh, so I just wanted to bring this reminder of the bold truth today. Uh, so for bold courage, again, I want to remind you, please talk to your pastors. Uh, please see if, if your pastors are willing to confront this, this uh, tyranny uh, that we are under, uh, this LGBTQ tyranny. We really are under a tyranny. The Democrats in, uh, in, at the federal level, but also in states like California, New Jersey, Illinois, uh, are passing laws to where there's a mandate that children must be taught the uh, LGBTQ history. Uh, they're, they're, they're communicating what's called the Equality Act. And the Equality Act is making homosexual behavior, everything in the L, lesbian, uh, G, being gay, homosexual, B, bisexual, T, transgender, Q, queer or queering or questioning, and that plus sign. And we need to pay attention to that plus sign because the APA has made now pedophile, they're wanting to redefine pedophile as maps and yaps. So map, is a minor attracted person. So see, they're trying to soften it. And then yaps are youth attracted people. So that would be uh, prepubescent and postpubescent attractions as normalized as orientation. And they want all of these things to be equal to mari uh, heterosexual marriage and uh, gender and race as a civil rights status. So this is very, very scary what's going on. You can see it at, uh, uh, First Stone under Equality Act. You can uh, look there. There's a slider. You can look at that. Uh, also at the Gone Too Far, uh, we have a website called uh, Gone with the uh, number two far. And what this is, is a we're, we have a proclamation and it's giving you the news about some of this crazy stuff that's going on. <clears throat> when you go to the website, you see a little boy there in drag, and that's because they're propagating this idea of bringing children into the LGBT community and celebrating them. Uh, this this kid, Desmond uh, the Amazing, um, was paraded out in a gay bar at a stripper gay bar, and this little boy is actually, you know, which is actually illegal for anyone under the age of 21 to be in a gay bar. And yet they had him in there and had him doing the catwalk on top of the bar and shoving dollars in his 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 little tights. Uh, this is how bad things are getting. Um, and then in the news this week, we have this uh, situation um, where you have, uh, a, a, which actually was a gay young man, he called himself gay. And there's a lot of these people that are in this, this place calling themselves gay Christian or gay conservatives. And they're actually speaking out against the destructiveness of the drag queens uh, and, you know, eroding the minds of, of children. And there is a lot of uh, mysteriousness around this young man having after protested a drag queen story hour. He, he, he was found dead and they're, they're ruling it as a suicide. Uh, but there's some other sites out there that are questioning whether or not it was really suicide after he protested these drag queens. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on and, uh, and people are not paying attention to how dark it is getting out there. So that's why I'm part of, uh, Jared, if we can, let's go to the B, the number two, God.com. I'm a part of the, the Back to God, uh, the Josiah generation that's being led up by Pastor uh, De uh, Dexter there. Uh, and as Dexter, they developed this website to where if you become a, a B2G a partner under there, there's lots of sub pages for learning. And uh, if you take the challenge, uh, you can get access to all kinds of teaching. Well, I'm going to be doing the, the social part, the social media part and watch these videos on this website. And it'll uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. The other thing I want to announce is in April of this year, we're going to have a conference and it's called God's Voice 2020 this year. 
Uh, last year, you may have remembered, uh, we had God's voice. And the reason why it was launched is because there was the revoice. Uh, and what they're doing is they're revoicing the idea of scripture uh, to promote LGBTQ Christianity. We have a bang up speaker lineup. If you go to God's voice.us, you can see all of the speakers. There's a save the date graphic, uh, Jared, uh, I sent you uh, where uh, it shows the early bird registration being uh, $85. And, uh, and you can see all of the speakers on this one graphic. And uh, Dr. Everett Piper, if you've never heard him, he is absolutely outstanding. Uh, great speaker. He's going to be talking about how LGBTQ is like a cult. Uh, Pastor Blair, uh, who's been pastoring me, um, is also uh, the senior pastor at Fairview Baptist, where we're having the conference, but he's also the pastor at Liberty Church in Orlando, Florida. Joe Dallas is a great spokesperson in dealing with, uh, he's going to be talking about how the LGBTQ want the bride, the bride of Christ. Dr. Quentin Van Meter will be addressing the science and uh, what's going on in the medical world with transgenderism. He was one, he was a young man when they were doing it at John Hopkins, uh, going to be outstanding. Many of these people have what, have experienced what's called the tyranny or the censorship or the oppression of the gay agenda, the gay movement, and they have their stories. Greg Burt with uh, California Family, Family uh, Council will be bringing what's happening in California and the outrageous laws. Reverend Baker will also be talking about Revoice. Then we have some stellar counselors, Christopher Doyle, David Pickup, um, who will be addressing the counseling and censoring and what's called the conversion therapy. You know, that's a made up term from the human rights campaign in the Southern Poverty Law Center. A lot of people don't even know where this started, but actually it was the human rights campaign who was the biggest gay lobby in the world there in Washington, D.C., with millions of dollars in their war chest to bring a propaganda in the LGBTQ, even worldwide, uh, to oppress counselors, therapists, uh, support groups, and now the church. Jeremy Shosher, Shoshow uh, is a pastor from Detroit who experienced this uh, firsthand with 10 probably 10,000 people protested their church and that had its roots here with the mama bears here in Oklahoma City. So this is all about being bold with truth, courage, speaking out. That's why we have God's voice, but also bold compassion. And today my guest with uh, bold compassion is uh, coming from Munich, Germany. Um, we want to bring uh, Robert, um, uh, Go with Sir Go Weitzer, um, and Robert is there in Munich. Uh, Robert, um, are you with us? Can you come on in? Yes, I'm there. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, thank you for being on this program. So, Robert, um, tell I know you're part of Homosexuals Anonymous, and you minister there as a uh, as a counselor as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about your work to begin with. Well, I'm leading probably one of the oldest FSK ministries on the globe. We have some partner ministries like uh, Chasen International. Um, meanwhile, we have a global outreach and I'm very thankful that we have. Uh, after this session, I'm gonna meet up with a group of Russian leaders. We're about to expand to the East. And uh, we have a pretty good outreach in Down Under in New Zealand and those countries. And some time ago, we started reaching out to Muslim countries, countries like Kuwait and others, because some of those Muslims join us, thankfully join us. There is no other way for them to meet. And they gladly accept our Skype online program. That is awesome. Th and I'm so grateful that you're doing that. And of course, tell us a little bit about the oppression there that you're experiencing with just being able to present the idea that people want to change. Well, the things are pretty, again, pretty tough over here. Our gay minister of health is about to pass a new law, which they call anti-conversion therapy law. 
Now, this sounds like pretty logic at first, and this is why all political parties, all scientists, doctors, psychotherapists, psychiatrists, they all fell into the same trap. Well, you can't do that, that's harming people. Never mind that uh, the board of uh, scientists that he put together to uh, justify that law was partly at least uh, gay organizations. Never mind that there actually is almost nobody in Germany that does such things. The whole thing, and this has been shown in countries in Europe where this law already exists, is that he wants to silence all opposition against gay propaganda. It could happen to you that if you're standing in front of a group of people saying that the Lord set you free, blah, 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 this counts already as publicity for conversion therapy. That means you either go in one year to jail or you have to pay a very high financial fine, as it looks for now. Wow. Okay. So we're going to probably, uh, in coming to Europe, we're, we're hoping our staff can come to Europe. We're going to have to be pretty circumspect and careful and, uh, and knowing um, uh, our, our offering there. Uh, would be full of truth, but at the same time, more uh, walking in the fear of God than the fear of man in that we continue to tell the truth. Is that what you're doing? Yes, we do. Uh, we have local chapters here in Germany uh, and in some other countries. We have a weekly meeting on Skype and we have an on online program. That we also true. go to churches, we go to political uh, party conventions, to um, private meetings of, of organizations, whatever, wherever they want to have us. That's one, that is wonderful. Okay, so, uh, so Robert, um, it hasn't always been this way with you. Um, mm -hmm. let's, let's begin in the beginnings of your life, um, your upbringing, because you, you lived at one time gay identified. Um, mm -hmm. So, how did this all begin in your life? Yeah. There's some nice pictures, yes. <laughs> yep. I come from northeastern Bavaria. That uh, was a time and an area where people didn't even mention sex, not to even speak of, of homosexuality. I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> I thought I was the only one on this planet when I had the first feelings. Um, so when I came to Munich, that was like a tight breaking loose. And I saw there are gay bars. Uh, I went to, I went straight into a gay leather and jeans bar, and I thought I'd drop that there. <laughs> My God! <laughs> and uh, of course, I mean, at first the kick is it's great. You know, you feel you're young, you can have all the men, and you get all the men. Uh, you think you can finally be yourself, and you idiot. And after a while, you realize maybe that's not exactly what I was expecting. So uh, that was a time when, yes, we knew that uh, HIV existed, but nobody really cared. Um, that was shortly about when Freddie Mercury lived here in Munich. I got to meet uh, the woman he was living with here, Barbara Valentin, and some others here. Uh, we had pretty wild parties, and the kind of things we did, the way we partied was pretty rough. I had a lot of men, a lot of wild sex. I had pretty much everything there. So why wouldn't I be happy? <laughs> right. And they probably at these parties, uh, I've been to a few of those parties too, is what I called myself a boy toy uh, in my most formative years from 14 to 22. And then I got out of it. But in those early years, there's also lots of drugs and alcohol. Uh, was that true in your life as well? Oh, yes. In our time, that was mostly alcohol. Yes, some did LSD and cocaine and some of that. Some even went to, to heroin, whatever. It's even worse today because the young kids today, they are 18, 19, and they're taking crack or crystal meth or whatever. That ruins their lives for good. And some of them die. A lot of those people that I got to know, and I'm thankful I got to know them, they're not just we always talk about sex when we talk about gay people. They were wonderful people. And I still have good friends there. I'm still in touch with them. But many of them are no more. And HIV is just one reason. The condom doesn't protect you against anything. 
That's right. And then, uh, of course, then there's also the depression and the suicide and all of the other uh, anxiety and the fear and the, and the pain, the loneliness that accompanies that lifestyle. Yes. They always say it's, it's normal, it's natural, it's like anything else. No, it's not. And if you're in the gay scene, and uh, even today I'm, I'm in touch with the gays, because I think we should be going out and not waiting till they come to us. So things that we did, but that were still frowned upon are pretty normal right now. So what's happening there, I think if parents knew what's happening, really happening in the gay scene, they wouldn't let the gays into the school. And it's not normal. It's not just like any other kind of sex. It's a lot more extreme. Uh, lots of, of sexual practices that people can't even imagine are being regarded as totally normal. And they are very bad for your health, for your mental health, for your spiritual health. Over here in Germany, you have an institute called Robert Koch Institute. There you can see the number of men who have sex with men, MSM. Uh, on the whole number of people who have sexually transmitted diseases. And it's extremely high. So if it's so normal, if it's so natural, and like anything else, why are so many of them sick? The great question. I think we know the answer. Both of us have lived that, that life and know that it's, it's chaotic. So we've got some pictures of you. Uh, Jared, I don't know if you've uh, showed the pictures yet, but there's a, a first picture of when Robert was a young man and, uh, and then going into the scene. There's another uh, man that is with you in a couple of these pictures, the, uh, the leather picture, the, the picture on the car. You know, that's actually uh, a lot of what really goes on. I mean, it's kind of chaotic like that. Yeah. But the man there actually is not a gay. He was part of a rock project that was in. He was a he was and is a pretty good rock singer. So, just to so you were part of a rock band. Well, I used to be in some bands. I used to play live, also on the CSD, with very little outfit on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a picture of you with white hair. Yeah. What's, I changed what, my hair what, color. What's, what's going on there? <laughs> I changed the hair color almost every month. Mm. Like many, like I changed the, the man. Sometimes they had a couple of them one in one day. Yeah. So that's and, kind of indicative. And then when you, so tell us about the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, tell us about the, um, the, the process out. What, well, what, 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 the, what, what started in your life that made you want to, to say, no, this is not, this, there's no more to this. And when did that happen in your in your life, Robert? Tell us about your your transformation out. That was pretty interesting because I never had the thought of, of becoming an ex-gay. I didn't even hear of, of ex-gay ministries. I didn't even know <laughs> yeah. they existed. So much for publicity. Anyways, uh, it was about 2003. I had pretty much everything in my gay life. So, but I was so much at the end of the rope that I lined up some pills and I was about to swallow them. And for the first time in decades, I thought, okay, when I think back of my childhood, there was somebody up there. So hello, somebody up there. And I started to say a simple prayer like, okay, look at me and uh, get me out. I can't do this alone. So for the moment, there was no, no Hollywood choir singing, no angels, nothing. And I just managed to keep on going one step after the other. And so, then I saw a TV preacher. I stepped through some programs. I saw a preacher. I was kind of bored by the message, but still I went online and checked the homepage. And they had something called a hope line. And I chatted with them. And they gave me the link to Homosexuals Anonymous. That was the first time I saw anything like that. Then I went to North and all the other homepages. And I was so surprised, I thought like, how come somebody on the other side of the globe, and there were many testimonies on the home pages, why do they all have the same life story that I have? If it's also normal and natural, why do we all have the same problem with the father? Why do we all have so many things in common? And I thought, okay, whatever. 
I'll sign up to that AJ Homosexuals Anonymous online program. That was all I had. And I thought like, okay, if I'm gonna do it, it didn't work out my way. So I might just as well give it a try, whatever that is. It sounds pretty odd to me, but whatever. And I joined and this rocked my whole life in any way, in my professional life, my private life, my spiritual life, everything. It changed everything. <laughs> Who would have known? A couple of emails. So then, you were uh, you got involved with HA. Tell us about some of the um, the things that you have learned uh, in your process that has brought freedom. Um, I knew pretty much at the beginning. I started to read all those books. I had it all in my head intellectually, and that. Also theologically, I said, yes, Lord, I know that's the right thing to do, but it wasn't there. And when I saw the, what was that cowboy movie, that gay cowboy movie, whatever. Broke back. Broke back. Yeah, that was it. There was one scene where the, the guy broke down after the first meeting, and this is how I felt. Um, there was one friend I still have from the gay scene. He came over from the States to pay me a visit. And when I took him back to the to the airport, I collapsed. I started to weep. I, was, I told the Lord, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. I can't just have a couple of emails. I know you're, everything's right, but I can't do it. And I said, send me somebody. And a couple of days after that, the phone rang. And somebody said, hi, my name's John. And I knew this was the one. <laughs> so he's still one of my best friends. The thing I'm trying to say is you need company, you need friends, you need a mentor, you need people that support you. If you don't have that, you can read all those nice books, you can attend all the conferences. That would have not helped me. I had a pretty good church congregation that supported me. It was all still pretty rough. It wasn't easy after a couple of decades and a lot of wild sex. Your brain is wired on gay sex. Yeah. So, um, but yes, they saved me. They helped me. Well, God saved me, but they supported me in that. Without them, I would have not made it. Yeah, that that is a very important point in that uh, we have a little acronym we use here in this ministry, ABS, A-B-S, which, you know, ties into the idea of having, you know, the, the, the powerful muscles. Uh, but ABS having accountability. And if we don't have, a, I mean, starting with confession session, that's good, but it has to be more than that. And then boundaries, putting up the boundaries with person, places, and things that bring destruction in our life. And to have people that are going to uh, hold us accountable to those boundaries. And then as a spiritually devoted life, practicing spiritual warfare. Now you have probably um, in your story, if you would, um, you're encountering, we're all encountering some like pushback, but what's some of the things in your process? I mean, cause a lot of times people think they, they see us like you, you know, uh, 13, 16 years down the road and it's like, well, they seem, you know, normal. And, you know, I've had, had even people say, well, you never really were gay. And I'm like, yeah, well, you should have seen me as a young man. And uh, the reality is, is that transformation and change doesn't happen overnight. And there's some key things of causality in most of our lives. And you, you've been mentioning that you, you learned some of these causalities were very consistent. What were some of those in your life, Robert? Well, I come from that generation whose fathers and mothers were in World War, II. World War II. My father was uh, there as a young, as a youth. My mother was the eldest of five. Four armies fought around our house. Soldiers died in our garden. So they had to pull the emotional plug to survive. But it was hard for them to plug it back in. So I was always sort of distant from my father. He loved me and I loved him to bits. I still do, even though he's passed away. But I couldn't get through to him, not for the life of me. And so here I was, you know, fighting with the upcoming same-sex attractions and having nobody to talk to, nobody that taught me what it meant to be a man. I was just left, my parents had to work. I mean, that was a rough time back then. 
So I was there alone and like, okay, somebody has to take care of me, I guess. But there was nobody to take care of me. Yeah, financially, and I got food on the table and all of that. But that was certainly one thing. Um, I don't care. You know, people always mention the, 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 the gay dean. That's nonsense in my eyes. Um, aside the fact there's epigenetics now who sees the whole thing differently, it didn't matter to me in my gay life. It doesn't matter to me now because I've seen and went through so many things that contradict that simple message of being born that way and this is why you have to be that way. Um, I also met, had sex, gay sex at a very early stage already which influenced my development, I'd say also a great deal. If I hadn't gone for it, you know, I bought the t-shirt, I did it all, I had all the men. That would have probably looked differently if there was any sort of help for me, but there was no help. There wasn't anybody to talk to. There was no church people, no pastor, no teacher, no politician, nobody. But there was the big lure of the gay scene, you know, come in, we'll take you, whatever you are, we don't care. You can have all the sex you want. And I did, I joined and I thought, why haven't I thought of that before? Sounds good. Yeah, but the thing is sex doesn't heal. Yeah. It doesn't heal the wounds. It doesn't satisfy the, the needs that you have. Yeah, you can numb them for a while and so I did until it came back with a vengeance. And this is, you know, when I joined HA, I thought like, okay, they probably want me to stop having sex. And after two weeks, I thought, well, that was easy. What's the big deal? But then I realized when you take away the painkiller, everything lies bare, open, you know, all the wounds, all the needs, everything is there. And that's when I collapsed. I thought, I can handle this alone. There's, there's no way I can handle this. Also find, found a very good Christian therapist over here um, who is both a studied theologian, a psychotherapist, and a medical doctor. And he was of great help as well. So with all those, I had to, uh, to um, deal with a whole lot of different factors that contributed to the development of my same-sex attractions. And not just them, to all of my problems. I joined the anarchists. I was in street fightings. I did drugs. I did alcohol. A lot of things to, you know, I come from a very dysfunctional family. So whatever looked to me as some sort of better world or happy family or whatever, was good enough for me. I didn't know anything else. So why not try something else? I lived in anarchist communities. I had all the sex, all the booze, all the pot, all whatever. So yeah. here I am. <laughs> so, so you, 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 you did uh, several things here. I think I would like to reiterate you. You sought out counseling. You sought out God's truth. You mm -hmm. sought out support groups. You sought out accountability, and then you yeah. started dealing with the causality, the painful places of your life. If you look at the human being as portrayed in the Bible and elsewhere, it's always body, psyche, and soul. So you have to look where the problems are. If your tooth aches, it doesn't help you go into the pastor and pray. Yeah, that's big. That's always good, but you might want to go to the dentist first. So you always have to look where the problems are. And I dealt with them, with all my problems in many different ways. Yeah, with psychotherapists, with the pastor, with the group setting, with the mentor. And you have to do it that way. You know, it's not just one thing that fits everything. That doesn't work that way. And HA has always been, and that's why I chose HA, a family thing. People come here sometimes for years. If they come back, they are family. If somebody falls, they help them back up. They, they console him. They take him in their arms. And that's always drawn me into HA. And I got to know um, Doug McIntyre, one of the two uh, founders, first time in Pennsylvania. To this day, he is the man with the greatest faith that I ever met. He has brought people to, to Christ that we kicked out several times. And that means something. Yeah, that does. He was unbelievable. So we 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 in the church and, and also in these uh, support group environments, 
need to have some long suffering and patience and kindness and and actually uh, ways of giving hope, giving truth. Yeah, not only that, we also have to go out. I mean, over in AJ, for many years we did the same mistakes. We just spent time among ourselves. Yes, we had home pages, we had outreach, we spoke in churches, we spoke in Christian organizations, but that's preaching to the choir. If I'm, I have sometimes uh, profiles on gay dating sites, and if I'm chatting to the people there, they are totally surprised. They have never heard of anything like that space. And that's when I think the Great Commission is about going out making disciples. It's not about making a nice program that attracts people into. They are not interested in that. If, they, if we, all they hear about the Christian faith is distorted by third parties. So, but by the time they get to know me and they start liking me and then they find out, well, he's interested in me as a person and not sex, they're totally surprised. And when I tell them my story, they're even more surprised. As myself, I was angry because nobody has ever told me that then. And still there are so many out there that have never heard about the help that there is, about the options that they have. And now our gay minister of health wants to cut down those options by telling them, well, if you do what I'm doing, what many others are doing, you're gonna get sick, you're gonna get mentally, well, he couldn't get the law fully through. It only applies for minors. So grown-ups can still opt for conversion therapy, but, and now comes the big but, um, the publicity for conversion therapy would still be illegal. And there's no age boundary there. So there's the continued attack there and it's ramping up. And now, is that just in the country of Germany where you're at? You're in Munich. Where well, What else is going on in Europe? Well, that's Europe is the European Union now and it's we're all headed towards the United States of Europe. So um, that's a European thing. That's in many other European countries as well. And those who are not in it yet will still have to follow. If the European court rules in a certain way, there's no way you can wait. You have to do it. And so that oppression is going all the way across Europe. Yeah. At the moment, we're even thinking of shifting our headquarters to Russia. Um, we're still undecided. Wow. Actually, okay. we came to Germany exactly for that reason. That was about the time when uh, Jonah, was going down off the Goldberg, one of my right. good friends. Yeah, that that and that was a I know that case and that was a really frivolous case, ter terrible case. Yeah. So, Jared, what's our time? Okay, uh, good. So, um, so Robert, in uh, wrapping things up here. If you were to tell our listeners, uh, of course, we have have your websites and we, we want to um, show those websites, the Homosexuals Anonymous website and the Robert um, Goldwitzer uh, website as well. Uh, Jared, if you would make sure that uh, that that's, uh, comes across the screen so listeners uh, can find uh, those links. Um, what what's what's the best way for people to get a hold of you, Robert? If uh, somebody sees this video, because this video will now be put on the internet and it'll have a permanent place. Yeah, just contact us through Homosexuals Anonymous. Also, any other way would be okay, but Homosexuals Anonymous is perfect. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. So, in closing, what hopeful word do you want to leave leave someone in um, in in closing out our time together here, Robert. When I was in the gay scene, I had a 12 year partnership with a guy from Israel. And I wasn't happy a single day in that partnership. I was so hurt. I was so lonely. I didn't see any hope there. My piece of hope to you, my, my words to you are there is hope. Don't let them convince you that there is none, that you have to follow the gays, the LGTB plus 300 other things. There is hope. Yes, they will tell you there's not. Yes, they will tell you it's bad to go away. 
how can it be bad to follow God's words, God's truth, God's laws? How can that be bad? Look at the gays who are going their way, how they are going down, about the many diseases many of them are struck by. Why is that a good thing? As opposed to our message where people find freedom. How is that a bad thing if you follow God's words? And yes, things might get rough on you, but there's one thing that you can always trust in. Jesus will always be with you. He will not leave you alone. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Robert, for being uh, vulnerable, for coming on uh, Freedom Realized Live here and sharing with the world uh, your story. Um, you, we usually have immediately several hundred people that, that tune in and watch. And then over the course of weeks, uh, potentially thousands of people will see this. So uh, thank you so much for your vulnerability. And I want to tell our listeners out there that, um, you know, we're here every week at 10 a.m. Uh, Central in the United States. And uh, we are on the internet. So you can watch and share and, and continue to promote the message of freedom that is in Jesus Christ. Freedom that also is found in good, healthy, godly uh, counseling and therapy and dealing with under root issues of homosexuality. There is freedom in, in finding people like-minded that do not want to live a gay identified life in support groups like Homosexuals Anonymous and other groups like the Living Waters groups and, and ministries like First Stone and uh, part of the Restored Hope Network. People that are really doing good work out there to help promote freedom. And so that's what we're all about here is uh, freedom, freedom in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, to promote freedom, of course, um, we do need your financial support and you can go to firststone.org or stephenblack.org and there are tabs there where you can give and donate uh, to the ministry. And I also want to uh, ask you uh, to please support uh, Julie Meyer, uh, her ministry in providing the music for the roll in and roll out of this program. Uh, it's the song we use is called The Voice of One. And it's becoming that more and more that these groups are like um, like John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness that there is a voice and he's crying out with a voice of hope and a voice that we need to repent, that we need to turn back to the Lord and have right relationship. And so that's why we use, it's not because I'm John the Baptist, but the concept of being the voice of one that gives reason. And so we use this music that uh, Julie has provided. And you can go to juliemeyerministries.com and order her CD. So again, this is your host. Uh, my name is Stephen Black, bringing you bold truth, bold courage, be courageous people, and bold compassion, sharing your story with other people. And we'll be back again next week, same time, 10 a.m. Central. Signing off. Thank you and God bless you. Of one crying out in the wilderness. The voice of one in the desert crying out. The voice of one. Crying out in the wilderness The voice of one In the desert crying out The voice of one
The battle.